Welcome to episode 11 of Talking Prisoner, part two with Wentworth's only iconic top dog, Val Lehman. Welcome back. Mm, thank you. Welcome back to you as well. Hi, Val. <laughs> it's lovely to see you back again. Thank you very much. Um, episode two, season one. So only the second show was written by Ridge Watson and produced by Ian Bradley. And the cameramen were Simon Hellings, Noel Penn and Ken Mulholland. Uh, it first aired on the 27th of February, 1979. There's a scene where you are laying flowers at the grave of your daughter. You have just had your hair done. You're looking beautiful. It cuts to a scene with you in the cell crying and, and Vera telling you that permission to your daughter's funeral was refused. The trees are blowing in the wind. What a beautiful scene. But what did you draw on to show those particular emotions? Oh, the possibility of my daughter dying, obviously. You know, I don't think you needed anything else, really, to, um, to uh, <clears throat> work on. Uh, you know, there was nothing, nothing worse I could possibly imagine. Yeah. And of course, my own daughter had actually played the role. Yes, yes. <laughs> Which sort Which of added to it. Mm, yeah. Mm. yeah um, um, and I really don't have a lot of trouble as an actor conjuring up those emotions. Uh, um, they're, they're, very, they're very much to the surface. I can grab them at any minute. <laughs> Was that at the St Kilda Cemetery by any chance? Or do you remember where that was? No, 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 it wasn't St Kilda. It was the Melbourne General Cemetery. Oh, okay, okay. In the big one, yeah. Wow, well, yeah. I wanted to kick the, the headstone, but somebody else had <laughs> had dibs on it already. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so I never got it. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so onto the fan questions. We've been overwhelmed with fan questions for you. There's... The most we've ever had it was over a hundred. So obviously we can't get them all in, but we've picked out some of the. Oh really? Why can't you get them all in? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here. We can time. make some up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, I'll shoot over to Ken for the first one. Jan Janice Robertson says that uh, Sheila Florence left several episodes after you did, Val. What were the reasons behind her exit? Did she decide to leave because you were leaving? Well, actually, that's exactly what Sheila said to me. If you're going, I'm going. Oh. And the, the minute that she heard that I had quit, she put her notice in as well. Is that right? Wow. Well, that was Jan Robertson, who, who comes from the Scottish Highlands. Oh, hello, Jane. <laughs> Jan, Jan. Um, okay, Matt. Okay, so this is, a, this is a few questions in one and from a few different fans, um, Jonathan, Paul Buxton and Andrew Hill and a couple of others. They all would like the same thing, they? Sorry? All asked the same thing, did they? Well, in a roundabout way, yeah. So they would like to ask Val how she got along with Carol Skinner, who played Nola McKenzie, and what it was like for her and Carol doing those violent scenes together as a really loved the showdowns and the scenes that, you know, you both filmed together. Well, Carol and I got on extremely well uh, and never had a problem personally. We were good friends. Um, that I do remember an absolutely ridiculous um, uh, thing on the, the script when the scene where, where I had to brand her with the, with the soldering iron. It actually requested me to write killer with the soldering iron right across her chest. And I said, what idiot wrote this? <laughs> I'll be here for a week. <laughs> no, to hell with that, we'll just do K. <laughs> you know, sometimes the writers had no idea what the acting process was. They just didn't know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's... Uh, we, we got on very well socially, Carol and I, yeah. Yeah, no, it's a real fan favourite, some of those scenes. I said some of the, the, some of the most memorable scenes that you shot with, with Carol was some of those scenes. So. Oh, well, shooting her, killing her, to, it, it, uh, in, in, uh, 
uh, the, well, when Bea was in bed, as I remember, in hospital when she came yeah. to visit. And the, now there's another interesting story about that too, is that um, the script called for me to assemble that zip gun on camera. And wow. I said, what nitwit wrote that? You know, I'm definitely not doing that. And I can't remember who the director was at the time. It must have been Marcus. And he said, why? And I said, you're going to teach every kid in the, it, that watches this show how to make a zip gun that can actually kill someone. Don't be stupid. And so I absolutely flatly refused to do it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they brought in the pieces of it, but you never saw me put it together. No, no. Now I know how to make one, so watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Martin James B says, um, your, both your daughters played roles in Prisoner 2. I want to ask Val how that felt having them involved and does, do, do you regret any time, in, anything from, from your time on the show? If, if you could have written your own exit from the show, what would it have looked like? <laughs> yeah, well, to answer the, 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 the last bit first, if I had the opportunity to write my own exit from the show, I would have murdered um, the freak. Oh, I think it would have been, that would have been an, appropriate, <laughs> that, an appropriate end to my um, stint in Wentworth. <laughs> At reworking with my daughters, I found it actually... Um, uh, not difficult, but you know, I worried for them, for for, for them that, that I I wanted them to enjoy the experience. Uh, I wanted them to be really, really good at it, and I think that I I always thought they would be, because I, uh, well, I'd had them in so many drama classes that I'd held. I knew they had the ability, and it was actually me who suggested to Ian that they use Cassie, who played my daughter Debbie. They said, we're looking, he said to me, we're looking for someone to play your daughter. And I said, well, I've got one of those at home and she can act. <laughs> Why don't, and she looks like me. Why don't you use her? And then later on, he said, we're looking for another one. I said, I've got another one. <laughs> and they didn't look any further. Mm. Did you choose the name, Debbie, for, for the character? Did you choose the name or was it already chosen? The name? No, I didn't choose the name. No, no, okay. no. no. no Cassie's never lived it down. She hates anybody knowing about it. <laughs> Um, there's a follow-up here uh, from the same person um, just asking who, who was your favourite top dog after your departure, so not including you, um, and, and also he says, tell her she's fab and loved by so many fans. <laughs> well, thank you very much to the latter part. And to who was my favourite top dog? I have absolutely no idea. I never watched one single second of the show once I'd left. As far as I was concerned, it no longer existed. Really? So I don't know anything about who, or who the subsequent top dogs even were. Wow. Wasn't interested, didn't want to know. That seems to be very common with a lot of cast members once they've left is they didn't watch it afterwards. Yeah, what people don't realise is, it is it's, a, it's a job. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, if, if, if you're uh, working as a, a sales girl on, on, on a, you know, selling, a tel or a salesman selling television sets, I mean, do you go back to see how <laughs> everybody's doing in the <laughs> selling? You don't. <laughs> it's a job. Yeah. It's what we do for a living. You know, it's our employment. Yeah. Our um, life. This is not a this is not a question. It's a comment. It's from Isabel Lorraine Cuthbert, the top dog. Can't wait for this interview. I was so fortunate to have met Val. They say you don't meet your heroes, but Val is simply amazing. Oh, isn't that nice? I mean, it, I mean, one never gets tired of hearing things about yourself like that too you can how could you possibly thank you very much <laughs> steve g says after you left the series some of the storylines became a little far-fetched but <laughs> you've already sort of said that you you know you, you'd gone and you hadn't watched so so much or anything of it a bit like me because i worked on it all the time i i 
certainly didn't go home and say, oh, turn on the TV and you know, oh, yeah. catch up with Prisoner. Um, and as the stories became far-fetched and the cast allowed that, but it's their own bloody problem. <laughs> Sorry. I just, you know, um, I, I, I certainly kept an eye on that. I had no right to, except that I happened to be an actor and I was interested in keeping my own integrity intact. And that's why. And I also, you know, I had a, I, you know, I, I, I really rated the show. I thought it was a very good show. And I thought it was worth looking after and caring about. And so I did. He also goes on to, to say uh, he loved the scene where the freak turned the fire hose on B. Do you have any memories of filming those scenes? Yes, at 9.30 at night, I have very, very, on a very cold night, I have very good memories about it. In, in a way, I was um, a victim of my own stupidity because uh, the, the script actually said that um, B would run. And I said, don't be ridiculous, B wouldn't run. So <laughs> I stood there just being hosed, you know, and obstinately standing there and not moving. And I thought, what an idiot, I should have run like mad. <laughs> <laughs> it was freezing cold and very, very wet at 9.30 at night, yes. <laughs> Would have been. Um, Cherie Dawn said, OMG, oh my God, one of my absolute favourites. What was her favourite love connection on the show? Was it Ken who was uh, played by Tom Oliver or the guy that helped with the fever? There was the lasso fever storyline. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story about the guy who hel helped with the fever. Um, I'm not sure. I, well, actually, you can decide whether you can cut it or not, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 it was, um, I'm trying to think who the, uh, the director, I think it was, oh, I can't kind of think who the director was, but he said, oh, do you like your, your going away gift? And I said, what? I said, the guy I've cast for you for that scene where he, you know, gets to stay overnight and gets into bed with B. I said, what you don't know is I turned him down years ago. <laughs> <laughs> a very uh, nice I've, actor, though. I've got one from a, a namesake, Ken Dunlop. Val's a great entertainer. She also has a good singing voice. She was in the play Trafford Tansy. Yes, Trafford Tansy, that's correct. That's the show I went straight into after Prisoner. And I had to, there's an amusing story about that too, because I had to sing the, the, the well-known song, Stand By Your Man. Oh, really? And I had never heard it. And they couldn't believe that I had never, ever heard the song. I said, I don't listen to popular music on the radio or on television. I, if, I, if I want to listen to music, I play classical music or opera. I have very little knowledge of popular music. And so they were absolutely stunned that I had never heard the number. So there I was singing Stand By Your Man. I sang it, you know, twice a day <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> very loudly. In a Lancashire accent. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard. <laughs> I've got one from Liam Watts, who, who is, is a staunch supporter. Um, and he, he asks um, the, the part of the, 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 the scenes in the great fire scenes with, with Maggie Kirkpatrick what was it like working with Maggie during her time in prisoner? Working with Maggie was always terrific. She is a very fine actress and she gives everything and um, which makes you, you know, so, so you, she's very, also very generous as an, act, as an actor. She works with you, not against you. Uh, and I have nothing but praise for her performance. So I was very fortunate. I, I, well, I think we were both fortunate that we, that we were cast opposite each other in, in very, very difficult scenes. And it was hours and hours, you know, lying around on concrete floors with blood on all, all over the place and smoke everywhere. And, you know, God, it was no great fun doing those particular scenes, I can tell you. Wow. Yeah, because um, that, that, those fire scenes, they, they didn't happen. They were on location, I I, I think, is that right? They didn't have what? 
they, they were on location? Uh, they were on location, yeah. Mm. So no, 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 they were in the studio. Oh, were they? Yes, they were. No, 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 that's right. Um, some of the some of the fire stuff when the fire was actually set, when you know, I think it was um, uh, Jane Clifton who threw or yeah, the you know, started the fire off. Mm. If you actually had flame, then yes, it had to be in a special studio. So that was that was you know off offset. But all their other stuff, all that smoke was that stuff they use in churches. It was dreadful stuff. Oh. They hated it. But that was all in studio. I never went anywhere else for those scenes. So all, all the scenes I did were in studio. Wow. And and did you have um, uh, what's the name? The la the lass that used to do the, the stunt stuff and the, all the blood makeup and so forth and so on. Uh, Viv Rushbrook. Oh, was Viv. She... Oh, what a wonderful artist Vivian was. She's fantastic. Um, yes, yeah, she was, you know, painting blood on us and all that sort of muck. Yeah, absolutely. No, she was there. Very busy. <laughs> she, she apparently used a lot of chocolate as, as blood. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not sure what she used. I just stood there and let her put it on me. <laughs> I can remember having to lie in a pool of blood for hours because I could because the crew said to me, she B had been stabbed and she's lying in the, on the cell on a concrete floor in the middle of winter, freezing cold, in this pool of blood. And um, you have to you have to lie there and wait because I've got two more scenes we have to shoot before we can come back. So I'm there for ages and ages lying in this concrete floor. And they finally came and shot the, the last uh, where I think Meg Morris runs in and finds, finds me on the floor. That was the, all I had to wait for. What they couldn't have done it immediately, I don't know. But then they all walked away and nobody even helped me stand up. <laughs> I said, I said, you you wanted for the next scene, but I said, I'm going to have a shower. <laughs> the next one, um, I'm gonna get Ken to help me pronounce his surname because I, I am shocked with his surname. It's from Sue Sizekio. Is that how it's pronounced, Ken? Sizeko. Sizeko. <clears throat> My apologies. Val Lehman, love Val on Prisoner. What a great actress in her portrayal of B. Smith. Wentworth's number one top dog. May I add what Val's doing now, seen on her celebrity Get Me Out of Here. She was in a guest role in Neighbours. Was sad with the passing of lovely Betty Bobbitt. Condolences to all. Love seeing all the antics and the scary stuff too. Growing up, we used to talk about Prisoner at school. Val, do you often catch up with the other cast members and do you miss playing B? Um, I miss the money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I guess I do catch up with other cast members, uh, particularly Amanda and um, uh, and I, I and Fiona, I, 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 I keep in touch with, and Yenta, I keep in touch with, um, and I used to keep in touch with um, Darling Betty, but, uh, you know, I sadly lost. Um, and yeah, uh, they're the people I, 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 I keep in touch with most often. Yeah. Or did keep in touch with most often. But, uh, we ring each other, or if I'm putting an event on, they're at the top of my list. <laughs> Mike John Kelly, uh, this is a statement, not a, not a question, but he, he says, I always loved the, her acting, or Val's acting was so natural. How does he know? Natural for me. <laughs> I think by natural they mean believable. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And thank you. That's a great compliment. Yeah, you were really believable. I mean, the, some of those scenes were just the, the the fun thing about doing this podcast has been going back and watching episodes again. Oh, what and, God. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it, it's brilliant. Um, Ollie James is the next one. Now he put about seven questions, but I'm not going to because we've covered a lot in the. Uh, That's a greedy um, thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> part one of the interview, but however, he did mention about Olivia Hamnett, who played uh, Dr. Kate Peterson, and Wayne Jarrett, who played Steve Faulkner. Um, what was it like working with those two cast members who sadly aren't? Uh, we are very good friends with uh, Olivia. And she was a huge loss. What a, what a lovely lady 
and what a real lady she was. Um, very, I was very, very fond of her and we socialised quite a bit. And uh, I thought her acting as well was sensational. She was, you couldn't say an, an unpleasant thing about Olivia. She was just a, a really, really charming, lovely person yeah. um, and a great loss. Uh, Wayne Jarrett and I, yes, were very, very good friends indeed. Fantastic. Um, I've got one from Gail Dobson Burns. Uh, firstly, she wants to thank you so much for doing these interviews or thank us in, altogether um, for us cult fans. It really means a lot uh, to us. My question is, <clears throat> um, do you think that B and Rita would have gotten along had they had their paths crossed? B and who? Rita, who who appeared in the later series, who was... Uh, I, can, I can't possibly tell that because I didn't watch her, so I have no idea what she was like or what the character was like. No idea. Sorry. Next one's from a, uh, a super fan who you probably know, Connor Muller, um, who's... I know of Connor, I guess. A huge fan. Um, he said, hi, Val, question that is really important to him is what advice would you give for an upcoming actor? <laughs> ah, what advice would I uh, do, um, uh, go back to school and learn something else? No, 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 no. <laughs> um, uh, acting, uh, uh, you know, you, I didn't have a choice. I, I had to, I just had to be an actor. I'm often asked by young people, you know, what do I need to do? What courses should I do? What should I learn about? And let me tell you young people who are interested in being actors, no knowledge is ever wasted on an actor, nothing at all. The things you are interested in very often will crop up in characters that you, that you, that you might have to play. The, the more interested you are, the more interesting you will be. And that doesn't, is not just for actors either. It's just for general life as well, in my opinion. So no knowledge is wasted on an actor. Wow. Did you ever think How, about teaching act? Sorry, Ken, but did you ever in your career or in the later years think about ever teaching acting? I mean, being such a brilliant actor that you are. I've, I've, I've taught creative drama many, many, many times. Okay. I worked before I was on, uh, uh, in prisoner uh, 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 in theatre and education, touring and performing in schools. And during the school holidays, they employed me to teach creative drama. Oh. And my kids used to come along as well, which is good because I didn't have to worry about what they were doing at school time. They were coming to my classes. And frankly, and you can ask them, they would rather have been in my drama classes than anywhere else because they thought they were huge, huge fun. Yeah. And I always think that, that, that creative drama should be fun. <laughs> I love teaching it. Howard, Howard Gordon says um, he, he loves this series and, and he wants to ask you about the amnesia storyline, which he says was riveting, groundbreaking. Her acting range was excellent. What was it like to almost play a different person for a few episodes? Well, I really appreciated it because it was entirely my own idea. We were at one stage asked to come up with some ideas and my character had been hit in the head several times in the show at that point. And I said, look, I've been hit in the head so much, something's got to give. How about amnesia? We haven't done that yet. <laughs> and um, gorgeous Denise Morgan grabbed it yeah, and, uh, and wrote it. And it was very, very interesting for me as an actor to play the character as she was before she had been institutionalised. So, you know, for me, that was great. It gave me something really different to sort of work on and um, try and achieve. And so, so I actually, yes, I enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> Did you have to do much research for that? Like looking into No, none at all. <laughs> none at all. You played it well. <laughs> no, I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Craig Rogers Bennett. Hi, I'd like to ask Val, is there anything that she kept from the set from her time as top dog in Prisoner? Also, please let her know that she's my favourite character in Prisoner. 
Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Anything that I kept? No, there isn't anything that I kept that I can think of. No, that I own from from the set. I think if I went around souveniring things off the set, they would have slapped me on the wrist very quickly. <laughs> Besides, there was nothing there I really wanted. I collect antiques and porcelain that's two hundred years old. So there were. Had there been something like that on the set, I might have pinched it. <laughs> but there wasn't. <laughs> I, uh, I actually bought a young girl in um, who was in for vocational training, you know, job experience, and you smashed a plate at one stage of the game. Uh, and the props guys, after the scene, uh, dropped it in the rubbish bin. And she went and ferreted it out <laughs> and <laughs> took it home because it was you oh, that had broken cool. this plate. I am a broken plate. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Brenda Dan Dainton says uh, Val played her role so well. I, I love watching Prisoner when it, it graced our TV screens years ago, and and you know she, she's a great fan. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Simon Trizapek said, "In your eyes, did B burn to death, or did she manage to escape from Barnhurst when the riot fire was going on?" I'd like to think she got out. She is a very clever top dog. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm sure she got out. And yeah. in fact, I'm terribly d d disappointed they never did a, a, a follow-up uh, show where um, she went, she had survived the fire and uh, she went on a, on a uh, uh, you know, an adventure, if you like, and a whole mini series or a whole series trying to kill the freak. <laughs> <laughs> pursuing her hmm. what a great story you should have uh, you should have put on with that yes <laughs> i think it would have i think i think it would have had viewers interest yes. definitely hmm. it's been off series that's the word i was looking for yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I like to think that she might have sorry joined a nunnery sorry i <laughs> meant a nunnery <laughs> No, she may as well have been, all of us, and she had no sex life in prisoner either. <laughs> in good word. Um, Jason Allen, Nick Etherington, and many other fans have all asked this question. Let's talk hair. Everyone was strawberry blonde at the start. Did you start the trend on set? And can you remember everyone's reactions when you went from long hair to short hair? <laughs> well, I can remember the producers' reactions when I went from long hair to short hair because I gave them six weeks' notice, personally and in writing, saying, this is the date I'm having my hair cut if you wish to put something in the script, and they just never bothered. So I turned up with, complete, with short hair. And they said, oh, 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 what have you done? I said, well, you were told, you know, it's your fault if you're not going to do anything about it. Um, I said, you know, my character's a, 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 a hairdresser originally. That's what B was. So um, I'll just add a little line. And so Colette was given a line saying, hey, B, what'd you do with your hair? I said, oh, I got sick of it and cut it off last night. Beginning and end, that was it. <laughs> but I mean, they totally ignored me. They didn't say yes, that's a good idea, or no, you cannot do it, or reply to me in any way at all. So I thought, rude bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just cut my hair. <laughs> and I did. If they said no, you cannot do it, I can just <laughs> imagine your reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what wouldn't be very uh, much as I could, I mean, I would have yelled, but there wouldn't have been much I could do about it. I was actually very cross with them when they did not allow me or my character to give up smoking because I actually gave up smoking as I think we've talked, I took most of before for something like a year and a half. And um, they wrote the cigarettes into the script. I also, I don't know if you know this story, I had, I had a bit of a run in with those props boys on several occasions. They were not my favorite people. And they used to deliberately stand in eye line when I was doing emotional scenes and full faces and things, you know, I could cheerfully have smacked them in their little faces. However, 
Um, I, on one occasion during uh, rehearsals, I went over to the props book because they had prop cigarettes and grabbed a prop cigarette to smoke during rehearsal in the studio. And, and, and I was yelled at by one of these adolescent pimply faced <laughs> pop boys. And they moved and I said, look, oh, for God's sake, I said, I've never, ever smoked one of your cigarettes before because I don't smoke those damn cigarettes. I always smoke my own cigarettes in the show. That's the first prop cigarette I've been picked up. I haven't had time to go and buy any. God damn it, you know. Anyway, so I thought, <laughs> mumble, mumble, mumble. And the next break, I went down and, um, and managed to buy myself some cigarettes. And I thought, damn this. I went back to the uh, into, into the green room and got hold of a telephone and hold of a telephone book, and I rang. I, I smoked Peter Stuyvesant cigarettes at the time, and I rang up them. I rang up the distributors and said, "Hi, it's Paul Lehman here." And I explained to them, they said, "How many do you want, and where can we deliver them?" <laughs> so, I said, well, I, no, it wasn't Stuyvesant; it was Dunhill. Dunhill. Oh, that's right. And so I said, well, um, there's another character in the show that also smokes, and she smokes Dunhill as well. I smoke the blue, she smokes the red. And so they said, fine, and they delivered them every month, a whole huge Ooh. supply to the studio. And I said to Sheila Florence, guess what, darling, you don't have to buy cigarettes anymore. They're all provided. Wow. <laughs> How about that? Story. <laughs> well, you, you may be... You may be uh... Now that you've, you've flogged two different brands, you, you may well expect some packs of the goodies through the mail. <laughs> never know. Actually, when, when, I, when I quit Prisoner too and went up to, and started immediately, I, like the next couple of days, I went to Sydney to start rehearsals for Traffic Tansy. Everyone was madly keen on those corn crisp things, which were really new at the time. And and they're all out there going there, you know, buying packages from from the from this from the machines in the in the in the uh, uh, in the hallway. And I said, "Good Lord, why do you eat so many of them? You'd be a great advertisement." So I actually contacted the company and said, "Are you aware that all these actors are and this huge box <laughs> of all of the stuff that they 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 um, uh, produced turned up, which I left in the in the corridor of the theatre." so that the actors could just help themselves to it any time they wanted. You know? And they said, well, how on earth did you do that? And I said, I just rang and said, wouldn't it be not? And, you know, did you know that all these people are here? And they just offered. <laughs> <laughs> not hard. I'm surprised Dunhill didn't use you for commercials as a, as a, as a spokesman. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame they didn't actually. When you could advertise cigarettes. I, mean, I, used to, I used to use a gold Dunhill lighter on set too. Really? No one never bothered to notice. <laughs> <laughs> Except when I lit it under my chin at one time, as I told you earlier, because I wasn't happy with the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to your hair just for a quick second before we move on to the next one, was there a reason that you cut it? Was it just a change or was there... I was just sick of death of long hair. I thought, hell with this, I'll cut it off. Yeah, I decided I was going to have short hair. Yep. Just okay. a whim. <laughs> um, Max Dweeb, he's, again, he's put a few questions, but I'll, I'll just go through a couple. He said, you are a legend. Um, his question was, when did you start to think, okay, this is not fun anymore? Um, I think I, I, I said a bit earlier that... Uh, it was the attitude of a, a, a producer, yep. a director, actually, not a producer, and that, that, that just got me. And I just thought, why am I putting up with this shit? Um, uh, I felt unvalued and, um, uh, and, uh, and felt that the whole work situation for me was unpleasant. And I thought, so I rang my agent and said, find me another job. And she did very quickly. And I walked in and gave them seven weeks notice. Bang. That was it. And the weird thing was there was a, 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 a typo on my contract because normally it should be eight weeks. Mine said seven, which was exactly what I needed. Oh, Someone wow. looked after me. <laughs> he also personally... Um, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> He also said, I personally thought this was genius and the acting was amazing and truly believable and, of course, had a fantastic climax. He's talking about the uh, NOLA 
McKenzie storyline. And he also asked what you thought of the Zara Moonbeam story. Oh, that was a <laughs> lovely, that was so stupid, that storyline. Idiotic. <laughs> However, I ploughed through it. <laughs> you sure did. And, uh, and, and did my best to make it believable. Yeah. Well, quietly, I thought it was a bit of rubbish. <laughs> Paula Marie Vernon says, I'd love to meet Darling Val in the future. The best top dog. Val is Perth-born. I'm from Perth, Australia as well. Oh, good place to come from. My, my family are still there. My two gorgeous sisters and all their families are there still. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and millions of cousins as well. <laughs> Good place to be born. And before we move on to the next question, for the fans that do want to meet you, can you tell them quickly about the event that is happening in February in Melbourne? Yes, there is an event in February. My gosh, you'll have to, that, that will be announced on all the sort of websites that have anything to do with prisoner very, very soon. And I think it's already been announced uh, in Women's Day yesterday. Yesterday, yes, yesterday, yes. Um, uh, that there is an event called Val and Friends at uh, in Melbourne on Sunday, the twenty seventh of February. Uh, no venue has been um, announced as yet, and it won't be announced because we don't want people who aren't invited turning up. <laughs> and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that some of our crew might deign to turn up at it as well because I Gosh, do that I as, can... as my friends too <laughs> and it's held by the uh the lovely partners in crime group also who are uh, Vent partners Vent in crime is a lovely group now I don't know if any anybody actually knows this but I started partners in crime with another person who should be nameless and should oh, have you, always you're the known. founder of it hmm you're the yes. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't she know. and I were the owners of it. We started it off. And uh, she never, that, they never, used, or she never used the, um, the, the um, what do you call it, trademark thing that I, I designed for it. But I've given that design, which I did to mine, my property, to uh, Maria Grande, who's taken it over with Barry. And uh, they are doing their very best to, um, erase the bad reputation that Partners in Crime acquired after I left. <laughs> well, they've done a good job because, uh, yeah, they've put on some great events and I, I know this will be a great event as well. <clears throat> you're organising. Yes, they have indeed. Yeah. And I know all about this event. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because <clears throat> I've been giving advice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm very happy to work with Maria and Bad. She, she's a, an intelligent, interesting lady. Yep, she knows what she's doing. And she's um, doing it for the right reason. Yeah. And we'll, we'll also place a link on our website to the, to the event as well. So oh, good, 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 yes. All about it. Um, Derek Oglev, I think that's how it's pronounced, said, Love B. Smith, one of the best characters on Prisoner Cell Block H. Just a comment there for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, say at, at the moon, I remember it. <clears throat> I always called it prisoner saw book H. <laughs> and you were right. I know I was. <laughs> uh, mind. Because if you look up H, if you look up H in the dictionary, it is spelled A I T C H. That's correct. Exactly. And, I, this... and I've, I, I'm, a, I'm a grammar snob, always have been. <laughs> No, I, I well, you're quite right. <laughs> you're quite right. Um, this this computer, the laptop that I'm I'm working on, is sitting on top of a pair of shorter Oxford English dictionaries, and I can assure you that the word H is spelled exactly as Val spelled it, H, with an A. Mm. <clears throat> uh, I'm I'm. Uh, Actually, I said to the uh, writers and the producers of Prisoner right from the very beginning, I'm happy to use any swear word you like. I will not use incorrect grammar because I think incorrect, 
incorrect grammar pigeonholes you. It suggests to people what your education or lack of it might be, or your way you grew up. Whereas swearing doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't have that stigma in my, in my opinion. But bad grammar certainly does. And I ran into a lady with in, in Turak Road shopping one day with two little girls from Merton Hall, which is a very posh Church of England girls grammar school. And she ran up to me and said, oh, my daughters love watching you in that show and I have to thank you for something. And I said, what's that? She said, I'm not using incorrect grammar. I said, you were probably the only person in the world who has ever noticed, but thank you. <laughs> hmm. And, and I even it's necessary for B to, to say, I done, I seen you was, you know. Even the nicest people swear. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I swear all the time. <laughs> Can, uh, Sarah Elizabeth says, hands down, fave favourite character in the show, favourite character in the show. What was the hardest scene that you can recall for you? The hardest scene. Oh. Well, you see, scenes are difficult for different reasons. Uh, difficult because they're uh, uh, emotional, perhaps, or difficult because they're physically difficult, uh, like climbing up a ladder and, and having to hair in a harness and almost falling down with Maggie Kirk, Patrick and I on a, you know, with, with smoke all around us. But um, <clears throat> I really don't have a most difficult example, I'm afraid. I don't have one. It never occurred to me which one was, was the worst. No, I don't Sarah, Sarah also says, and I'm, I'm saying this with a bit of tongue in cheek here, you look <laughs> like such a sweet person in real life. Was it hard to play the sweet but tough B. Smith? <laughs> I can be sweet if it's necessary. <laughs> Don't and reach I through the them. as well. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't killed anyone for weeks. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is from Ron Clayfield. Now, this is a question that every uh, interview gets asked, every cast member crew. What are your thoughts on the remake of Prisoner? And would you have liked to have played a role in it? The only role I would love to have played in Prisoner would have been the governor. Because oh. that would have been a completely different approach to, to the whole sort of idea of, of women's prisons for me as a person. I would love to have been given that opportunity because they were not <clears throat> interested in any of us. And um, uh, uh, I remember seeing, uh, well, we were all invited to come and have a look at the, the first episode because if they wanted our endorsement, obviously, and why wouldn't they? And I thought that it was very well produced. I was absolutely astounded at some of the stuff they were allowed to do that we weren't allowed to touch. I mean, I had to beg to be allowed to swear. <laughs> But no, boy, some of the things that they got around with sexually, those sorts of things that, you know, often, obviously they, that, that they are perfectly in place, they happen, but we were never allowed to portray stuff like that. So I thought, well, that would be interesting. How, I wonder how I would have managed that. That would have been a, a new thing for me. I've never done that sort of thing on screen. So um, it was a bit of an adventure. And I am pleased to say they chose a sensational actress to play B. Uh, Danielle Cormack, a wonderful actress, and she has won as many awards, I think, for portraying that character as I have. So it's the character plus the actor. It's, it's not one thing on its own. Did she, uh, did she seek any advice from you prior to getting the part? No, absolutely none at all. We did a personal appearance thing when we were presenting awards at something on one occasion. And, and, we, and we joked together. They actually wrote us a script and we both tore it up and threw it away because she's a very bright lady. She's very intelligent and very with it. And I was just really delighted to discover that as well. And the only thing I remember saying to her is, so how many people of your character, you know, you'll be killed so far? And she said, oh, one. I said, oh, <laughs> amateur. <laughs> <laughs> 
did you, you actually I, did. I also, um, sorry, I also suggested to the, uh, the chap that does the, the Barry Campbell is his name, that does the um, uh, most of the events when I'm not talking, in, in England. And the, he did a big one, oh, was it last year or the year before, uh, with a lot of uh, prisoner cast members. And I said to him, why don't you do the two Bs? And he went, oh, because we were going to go both be up in, in the same area at the same time. What a great idea. So that's what we did. We actually, so I actually got to, to work with Danielle on, on that, just the two of us together. And that's when I discovered how yeah, really, really bright she is. I have a huge respect for her, but I have to say, I didn't watch the show. I didn't watch it, Wentworth. I was given, actually, <laughs> when we went to the launch, the, um, I can't remember the head, the head publicist was, he came and said, you're going to watch it, Val. I said, oh, I can't afford Foxtel. I'm not working at the moment. And so they, oh, he said, uh, I could send you some tapes. And I went, tapes? <laughs> said, oh, you'd like the platinum service, would you? I said, that'd be nice. <laughs> I was standing about two feet away, killing herself laughing. <laughs> and that's what I got. And she said, I got my, well, got it, Val. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually only gave it up um, a couple of years ago. <laughs> but I moved up here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but then I went away on tour uh, with the musical Grease for a year and a half. So I didn't ever actually watch it after that. I didn't have, I was not able to. Yeah. <laughs> what, what part did you play in Greece? Oh, the, the head, the principal of the school. That was great fun working with Todd McKenney and Bert Newton and Bert and I, Bert and I had a great time together during the, um, uh, the, 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 the jive competition between the students, which is a big dance bit. We were sitting right, standing right at the back of the of, of the of the uh, the scene, and we, you know, looking in the audience, and we we're sort of chatting away to each other quietly. I said, you know, and saying all kinds of naughty things. To you and Bert, I said to him, one day there's going to be someone up in the dress circle who can lip read Bert. You know, <laughs> deep shit. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time working together. I had a lovely time. I really enjoyed it. We played Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne. Singapore, Perth, Adelaide, Hobart, Holton, Hobart, and then Melbourne again. Wow. It was a big tour. What a lovely time. <laughs> oh. Do it again tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I've got one from Tessie Davis, Davey, who says, uh, hi, Val. Now, this is a dedicated fan. I'm on my third round of watching all 692 episodes. Do you wish that they'd written you out with a better ending rather than just being transferred to Barnhurst? And she also yeah. says she loves your acting. That's very nice of her. Thank you. Um, uh, it, it was very difficult for them. I walked in and gave them seven weeks' notice. <laughs> I didn't have much time. I mean, I would love to have, you know, murdered the, the freak. And and you know uh, and died in the effort or, or or gone out you know but I think they thought oh she'll come back they were wrong. <laughs> I must have made a, an apology for Tessie. I'm not quite sure whether Tessie is a lady or a man. So we'll you know. Or even uh, a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Next one was Raymond O'Toole, but his question was similar. We've covered in um, you coming back to prisoner and what storyline you would have liked. So we can move on to uh, Ken's next one. Well, Meg Brown just says, Val, you are just one amazing person. That's very nice of him. Thank you very much. And I will say there's a lot more comments like that on the... <laughs> Talking Prisoner Facebook page where, you know, they were writing questions, but also a lot of compliments that weren't questions about you. That's very sweet of them. Thank you very much. Um, Paula Marie Vernon is basically just said, I would love to meet Darling Val in the future. Best top dog. Val is Perth born also. Um, and we've discussed the Partners in Crime event, which people can meet you. Okay, I've got one in from Derek. Sorry, yeah. that's double up that one, Ken. Oh, is it? Okay. 
Um, one last question. Oh, one final question from me, your fan, Val. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wonder if you can cast your mind back to a, a, a scene where, we, where you and Colette were walking down the corridor. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> And your line, your line was to to Doreen. How's the tummy wog, Doreen? Dor was having a, a little problem with tummy pains of some sort, and I stuck my head out from behind my camera and said, "Why are you calling her Wog, Doreen?" And you replied, "You bastard! Now I'll never get that line right." Oh, Did you get I couldn't deliver it without bursting out laughing. <laughs> Why are you calling her a wog? Why don't you call Doreen? Ah, mm, yes. See, those, those dreadful cameramen, they used to make our life more difficult every day. <laughs> well, I must admit, I, I, I shouldn't have done it, but and, and especially when we we're about to do a take, but uh, you soldiered through without a problem. You know, one of the things I loved about you guys too is I can remember a, a new director coming up to me and saying about a scene that I had just shot. And he said, no, 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 that's no, that, that's, that's no good, that's no good. You've lost all of these violence and, 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 and strength there. I said, why would she be being violent and straight and using it in this particular scene? I'm not like that all the time. How many episodes of this have you seen? <laughs> Very little, he said. I said, well, she has more than one facet to her, don't you know? That? And you guys with your cameras are going, nod, nod with the cameras. And when I was saying, she didn't no, 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 in support of me. <laughs> yes. Being villainous at the same time, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, told the director's office, you'll rip if you remember. Yeah, but there was the camaraderie was so good, especially oh, the first really, couple of months. Absolutely fantastic. Mm. Yeah. I and, always and, regarded it as a team, always. And I don't know if I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Um, uh, I was cross when uh, if, if you guys got left out. And in fact, very, very early on, and stop me if I've already told you the story, but... Um, I was about to leave the studio one Friday and his and, and the head of the studio at the time, whose name I can't remember, came up and said, oh, Val, we've got a, 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 a small do in the, uh, the boardroom this evening. Could you come back for it, please? And I said, what for? He said, oh, you know, there'll be a lot of you know, publicists and, uh, and journalists and what have you, and, what, you know, and, and a few drinks and get together. And I said, great, are you inviting the crew? No, he said. I said, good, then I'm not coming. <laughs> and uh, he didn't believe me. And on Monday I turned up, you know, and he said, oh, you, he stopped me as I was entering the studio. He said, you it embarrassed me terribly last Friday. This is Monday I turned up. And he, I said, why? Well, how? He said, well, you're the person they most wanted to talk to. Well, I said, well, you know how to get me there, don't you? This is a team, not just the actors. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Before we wrap up, can we can you let the fans know there's a, there's a project you're working on at the moment? You can maybe... No, um, the only thing that I'm doing at the moment is doing a lot of those terrible Zoom <laughs> online <laughs> self um, uh, casting auditions, which I absolutely hate. I mean, I'm much better getting my foot in the door anyway. I always have been, and. Uh, yeah, the, uh, it's just at the, they're at the moment because of uh, the lockdowns in New South Wales and Victoria, they're desperate for Queensland actors. Yeah. But so far, I haven't managed to get a role. I mean, I would love to be working, but no one seems to be interested in what I do or what I've done. Uh, and unfortunately, most of the casting directors these days are the age of my grandchildren, so they have no idea what I'm involved. <laughs> what a shame. I had a very good accent, but um, they can only you know, do so much. Yeah, so I would love to be working, but um, and I actually did put up my hand to be a, a, an animal wrangler for TV scenes and commercials and, and film. And they're very interested in me because I am, I know, very good with animals. And uh, I, but, but 
the, the, the idea of two, two hour, which would be four hours a day driving uh, from Toowoomba and, and back and down to, to, to the coast, um, I really couldn't face. So maybe I'll move closer to the coast, but I haven't decided. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm open to offers. <laughs> Well, thank you Be so nice. much, and um, thank you from the fans as well, and and for giving you giving us your time. I would, like to thank, I would like to thank the fans too. It's and if you hadn't been there, if you hadn't watched the show, if you hadn't loved it, we would never have survived. Thank you. Wonderful, Val. Well, awesome. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate it um, for coming back as well. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. Not a not, no no problem for me. Thanks so much. It was, it was a pleasure yeah. to see you again. Oh, it was a, a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. And a great privilege to be involved with you. Thank you. Well, uh, there's a very good chance that in February of next year, we will meet again. I hope so. Yes. I want you there and I want Ray there and I'd like Barry there too, if possible. Well, I'll, I'll be talking to Ray, I'm hopefully uh, hoping in a few days. Um, well, I will speak to him about it. And um, well. I was asking if Ray is well. Oh, Ray is, uh, as far as I know, he's, I think he's in his early 80s. He still writes stuff from time to time, memories and so forth. He would be a, a, an excellent, I'd like to get him on, on this. Um, was Ray was there right from the word go for till, till the end. Um, and Ray kept a lot of photographs and, and bits and pieces. I don't know what he's got hidden away, but I, mm. I'd be most interested to find out. Um, and I, I, I will certainly talk to him about um, what's happening in February. Oh, good, good, good. Because yeah. I've asked Maria to invite you and Ray and Barry. And we'll heavily promote it on our page as well. Pretty good. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. As well. Also, I don't something we haven't mentioned at all that a lot of people don't know that my my workload wasn't only working in the in the show that the publicity department used to almost every bloody weekend fly me to Sydney or Brisbane or Adelaide once or twice, not very often to do PR all oh, bloody weekend. Yeah. I used to very often do the last scene in the studio, go and have it get changed and go out and be picked up by helicopter and taken out to the airport and, and flown to wherever I was going. And then first flight back down in on Monday morning and a chopper on that bloody um, uh, tarmac to pick me up and take me back to the studio. That happened a number of times. And nobody else in the show ever did that other than me. Ever, ever, ever. They worked me into the bloody ground. Was, was that Shirley Hardy and Erin? Um, no, no, no. Um, uh, that was uh, uh, Lydia Lunch, I used to call her, Lavina Lynch. And and that redheaded tart who was there later on too, who said to me I could be replaced overnight. I said, good luck to you. <laughs> um, that redheaded woman probably can't remember her name. Yeah. I also remember George, whatever his name was, who was in the publicity department when we first started, and me going up to him and saying, this is publicity department, excuse me, I have a question. This is very, very early on. I said, uh, do you have to be a dancer or an ex-weather girl to get your name in the, in, the, uh, in the cast list of this show? He said, what do you mean? I said, I've got friends of mine ringing me up and saying, when are you going to be in prisoner? I think I've been looking at the, uh, you know, the, the TV week, but your name's never there. And I said, I've been in every episode from day one, but nobody knows about it, George. Why? <laughs> I ain't no good. I mean, I'd done PR. I knew what I was talking about. They it's liked cool. it. I mean, and Levita's saying, I love working with you. If I told you the story, I was walking past one day and she yelled out, TV Week want to know who in history you'd most like to meet and why? Stupid question these magazines very often ask. And I turned around and said, Leonardo da Vinci. And she said, why? I said, I'd like to commission a portrait. <laughs> <laughs> I love working with you. 
cook the frozen TV week the next week. <laughs> uh, it's been fun. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Awesome. Thank you, Val. Lovely to see you again.